Okay, we're going to look at making our interior divided pocket. Now you'll have to forgive me because I started this video and then realised that I was actually firing my camera um, above me. So I've actually done the stitching, initial stitching already. So I've taken my two panels and I've laid them right sides together and I've stitched a quarter inch seam allowance along the top and again along the bottom. So I do apologise, you haven't seen me do that, but I promise you I just did. It's just that the video was firing at the wall. So I'm just going to, what I've basically created is a, a hoop. So I'm going to turn that right sides out. And this is again linen, so it does crease like nobody's business every time I do this. And I'm just gonna, Push it so that those seams, and I'm just going to roll the seams with my fingers so that I know that the seams are sitting right on the top and right on the bottom of my pocket. And then I'm just going to take my iron and press that one in. So that's the top seam. And then I'm going to do exactly the same on the bottom. You want the seams to be sitting right on the side of the pocket. And because this is linen, I'm just going to have to press the whole thing over and over again. Not my finest idea using Essex linen for lining, but I do like this stuff. It's a little thicker to sew with, I find, but it, I just like the feel of it and the look of it. So, now I think you can probably see that the seam is now sitting nicely on the top there. So I'm just going to top stitch along the top of my pocket using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. a line that's two and a half inches from that top straight edge so let's just and I'm going to position my pocket so that that top edge that we just top stitched is sitting on that line on that mark Then I'm going to stitch across the bottom using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Which will hold this in place. Because your lining panels are shaped and the pocket isn't, you've got a slight um, overlap there. You can trim those off just so that the pocket panel is exactly the same size as your um, lining panel. And then I'm just going to baste stitch down the sides of my pocket to make sure that it stays in place. So using my longest stitch length, which is a six and an eight of an inch seam allowance. So this will be 
within the seam allowance of the bag. Don't need to back stitch at the beginning of the end because this stitching isn't going to be seen. Um, and once the bag's constructed, this stitching isn't going to be holding anything in place. It's just um, to hold it in place for this point, at this point. Now, um, I've had people ask me before why I do the slip pockets on my bags before I do the zipper pockets. Um, and the reason I do slip pockets before I do the zipper pockets is I've got a really nasty habit when I um, do the zipper pocket. If I do the slip pocket afterwards um, and my zip pocket's above it and I've got all the lining hanging down, when I sew my slip pocket on, I will actually sew it to the lining of the pocket that's underneath. Um, it's a nightmare. I've done it several times. It's really annoying. So I can actually see where my centre marks are on this from previously. So I'm just going to mark the line centrally down the middle of my pocket now if you wanted to divide this into three you could do if you wanted to leave it as one big pocket you can do just pop a little cam snap or something on there just to hold it in otherwise they tend to gape because a really wide pocket will gape um, but I'm going to stitch up that center line now I always stitch from the bottom to the top because that means if there is any stretching of the fabric it's not going to leave a buckle at the bottom of a sort of a pucker at the bottom of my pocket so I'm just going to just do one back stitch at the bottom now I've gone back about three or four stitches and I'm just going to turn my work at about 45 degrees and I'm going to go forward three stitches and then back. I'm going to do exactly the same on the other side. I'm creating effectively what is a little crow's foot. before finishing off. Now, why do we do that? Because slip pockets get such a lot of stuff rammed into them, this point here at the top of that dividing stitching is a really high stress point. You keep pulling at it, you keep pulling at it, and what will happen is it will actually rip through your lining of your bag. If we add just those two little um, Vs, one either side, those little triangles, um, it gives extra support to that seam in the middle. Um, if you check the back of your jeans, your jeans pocket, I haven't got jeans on and I haven't actually got anything that's got that on. Um, you'll find that the back pocket of your jeans also has those and that's for exactly the same reason because we tend to stick our wallet and our pocket, our hands and all sorts in those pockets. So that will just give your pocket just that little bit more stability. So now you've got two really nice sized slip pockets. Um, if you say if you wanted to make it into three, you could do. If you wanted to um, perhaps divide one off and make it an inch wide, you could then use it to pop um, a pen or a pencil in if you really wanted to. Um, it's very much up to you. If you wanted to lower this pocket down, you could do. Um, if you wanted to make it so that you can put, I mean, this is a tall pencil, so actually that pencil is probably a bit tall for this bag. If you were going to be carrying this sort of thing, you'd probably need to lower the pocket down a little bit. Um, it really is a personal preference thing. And again, so you can divide your pocket as you see fit or leave it as one big pocket and perhaps put a cam snap on it. Um, even a push, a little bit of Velcro, which I don't like using because I think it looks unprofessional. Um, but you, you know, you could use that to to fasten your to keep your bag um, pocket closed. Um, I know a lot of people say not to put interfacing on pockets, or only to put interfacing on the front, not on the back of of slip pockets. Um, I actually think that it gives. Oh, I've missed my, my basting has missed the side of my bag. Um, I actually think a structured pocket inside is actually much nicer than a floppy one. Um, also, think about how much use your pockets get. They get an awful lot of use, so you want them to be strong. And interfacing doesn't just stop the drape of a, uh, or to um, strengthen the, uh, thicken the fabric rather, it also strengthens it. So you want it to be as strong as possible. Uh, that's why I used interfacing on both the back and the front. It is again a personal choice. 
So that's your slip pocket done and I'll come back and show you how to do your um, zipper pocket. <laughs> 